Hey everybody, this is Simon here, and uh, I'd like to share a few things with you today regarding improvement, and that improvement is not necessary. I'm not gonna sit here and talk down on improvement. If you want to improve something, it's all well and good, but realize that it's not necessary in the first place. And it's actually when you approach improvement from that mindset, from that realization that it's not necessary, that's when improvement can be a fun thing. It can be an effortless thing. But if you're trying to improve something with effort, it just leads to more effort. Um, and on, on a deeper level, who you are cannot change. You are changeless. And um, basically, you are changeless because you are eternal. Uh, you are beyond time and space. And basically, you, in your essence of who you are, does not need improvement because you're already perfect. From this place of sort of abiding in the self, of abiding, of uh, resting in that place, in that home within of peace, you can of course take action and if you want to you can improve things but when you let go of your self-made identity the identity that you made up in your own head when you uh, men or mentally when you when you let go of identifying or clinging to that self-image you improvement almost seems completely utterly meaningless because at least the sort of improvement that would include improving yourself so it's when you when you dis, when you when you let go of identifying with your own self-made self-constructed identity improving yourself seems seems meaningless i just repeated myself but anyway what I'm trying to say is that it falls away. The motivation to improve yourself falls away when you realize that you are not your you are not what you think you are. You are not um, what you think you are. You are much more than what you think you are. It's when you it's when you let go of identifying with with what you think you are that's when you really find yourself and you don't find yourself as a thought form or as an idea or as um, something that you can grasp you find yourself in everything as everything you find yourself as life itself, as the tree, as the, as the rock, as the computer, what have you. You find yourself not, ba not merely in it, like, ah, oh, now you've found yourself, but you realize that who you are, in essence, is the entire universe. But it's when you let go of uh, identification with the small self, which is basically comes from separation. You out of separation create a sort of self-image. I mean, um, I can talk from my own experience, but I also know that like other like uh, people in general there's a tendency to identify with to create an identity out of pain and suffering because that's but that's ultimately what pain and suffering is pain and suffering is creating 
an identity out of what is universal in the first place. And then clinging and holding on to that story of, of uh, victimhood. That is suffering. But from my own experience, I have experienced what it feels like to, to identify with your past. To identify with, with um, pain and suffering from the past. Or even creating an identity out of pain and suffering from the past. I've, I've experienced what that feels like. It's quite, quite dreadful actually. And, and um, it's when you let go of believing in that identity, that's when it falls away. But the ego is terrified of doing that because that is sort of involves a kind of death of the ego. It involves a sort of... Uh, but it's, it's not a real death per se, but it's a sort of... It's, a, uh, it's like a snake, you know, when it's uh, shifting uh, its skin or something in this nature. It's like you... You... Um, you let go of that old identity which you know is not who you are that is like um, yeah that is that is like um, in some ways it's when you do that is when you let go of identifying with what you think you are that's when who you really are emerges and it's it's even I found this from my own experience. It's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite common to to um, want to create the self around around the realization of who you really are. It's like you, wow, you realize who you really are. And then you want to sustain that, you want to contain that, you want it to like stick. So you sort of <coughs> you sort of um, create self around that you create a self around that as well, but that self has to go eventually also. And that's basically what I'm going through right now. I'm going through releasing and letting go of the self that I've made up around my true around my true nature and my true nature is not separate from your true nature it's one one nature it's one it's one reality it's one love it's one it's all it's that you know it's one oneness basically um, so it's when you like you can notice your mind Trying to create a self around things. Trying to create a self around who you want to be. Trying to create a self around around um, who you find yourself as. But it's it's really it's really like you You decide. You 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 just abide in the oneness, in the nothingness, and it's through the nothingness that you find everything. It's uh, like uh, in the previous video I talk about that you are the nothing out of which everything is created, and that that in itself is very liberating because it frees you from all kinds of ideas about yourself. So, okay, you accept, I am nothing. And it's, it's a very, it's a good, it's like, it's a very liberating thing. Because through the nothingness, it's not like you are nothing and then everything just zooms out and it goes black. That's, that's not how it is. It's like, you are nothing and through that you can experience everything um, 
and it's really a different kind of experience when you abide in nothingness abiding in nothingness is the most it's like <coughs> from da uh, David Data's book Wild Nights he talks they discuss in the book there they, they discuss that they talk about being inside the room and being outside the room the room being this third dimensional reality basically they talk about being outside room as nothing basically that's my interpretation of it abiding in the nothingness yet living through yet living through form living through everything as as nothing so it's not a matter of it's a matter of abiding in the nothingness yet being fully present and active in the world around you but and it's not a right or wrong thing basically but it's it's when you abide in nothingness that everything that you you find everything and um it's also when you abide <coughs> it's also when you when you abide in nothingness you realize that wow i don't need anything all of the needs came from an identification with a self and an identification with a self is like okay i'm a man um, I am this this much year old, year old, and from that, I need this or that or that or that or that. So basically, needs stem from identification with a self-made identity. But when when this, when you drop the self-made identity, the needs fall away they seem meaningless, they seem that they don't exist anymore. But the ego has a difficult time grasping this because the ego wants to know what will, what will happen when you let go. But it's first when you let go that you will know what will happen. It's, it's like the ego wants to know what well, what will happen with me when I abide in nothingness. What what will happen with me when I abide in the self and when I dive into the void and whatnot. But it's impossible to know before you do that. And in order to dive, in order to abide in nothingness, you've got to put the ego aside. So realize that even if you're right now identified I mean we all are I guess to a certain extent but if you right now you feel identified with with um, a self-made identity realize that what you want from that identification what you want what you want from clinging to a self-image because there's a reason you do that there's a reason I mean I'm, I'm saying you but I'm basically talking about I'm talking about myself also I'm talking about the nature of consciousness like um, basically there's a reason why we hold on to a self-image because we want something from it but realize that what we want from a self-image is already ours. And we don't need a self-image in order to get.